Hello and welcome back to the final episode of A Splash of Paint, where it's time for today's Art Bike project. Let's cross over to the other side of the studio and welcome back versatile artist Pitt McGarry as he demonstrates how to use oils to wash, brush and comb some tiger's fur. Today we're going to look at painting fur. Now this is quite a complicated subject because fur can, uh, covers a, a wide area. You've got fur on the flank of, a, of an animal, you've got fur on the, sticking up at the back, you've got the muzzle, the ears. There's all different types of fur, so it's not just one um, aspect that, we, uh, uh, that, that covers all fur. So we're going to just cover as a little bit of it and give you an idea of how, how uh, you can tackle fur in oil. So I've got a fairly uh, big brush here, number 10 again, which we, I think we'll go for something like a um, uh, tiger fur or something like that. Just put some of this on just to give you a, an idea where we're going. Something nice little orangey colour. I'm mixing orange, Indian yellow, a little bit of Alorizian crimson, uh, tigers. Uh, get their, their fur gets darker as it gets near the, the top of the, the body and then lighter as it, it goes down. So we were looking at the top of the body here. Um, and we're just lighting it with a little bit of yellow and we come down further. Uh, yellow again. Winds are yellow again. Just dropping down the body. So there's roughly a, the back of a, a tiger. Um, I need to offset that against something, so I'm going to go into a, a, a dark um, uh, colour. Um, I've got some Payne's grey, a little bit of blue, black, and a little bit of black. So we'll make that a little bit wet, put a bit of turps on there. A little bit of liquid. Liquid helps spread the, the oil a little bit further. A little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of black. Just get that. I'll explain a little bit more what I'm doing as, once we get some basic colours down. And we also want to get some stripes on here. So let's uh, just go over the top here. We could perhaps actually bring that down a little bit more. As you can see, I'm lightening it as we get further down the body. Again, using the, the darks. The stripes help the tiger break up their contours and blend into the background when they're hunting or wish to be concealed. So we've kind of got just the basic undercoat here. Um, one of the big mistakes that people make is trying to put the fur detail on too early. It's the last thing that you should be putting on. You get your base colours down, and you work over the top with finer brushes to um, get the detail. Uh, one of the difficulties is, is, is trying to ensure that you don't muddy the oil so you can't get any detail on. So we'll see if we can work around that. What I'm going to do is I've got a large brush here called a coma, and that uh, puts, once it's wet, uh, the ends uh, spread out, and you can put on quite a lot of detail in one go. So. Uh, We'll do that now. You can see it helps. We've got to follow the, we'll keep it nice and wet. The consistency is something a lot of people forget with oil. You, if you're working over, to, over wet oil, the consistency has to be lighter on the top, otherwise it will just muddy and, and blend in with your, um, the oil underneath. So in the same way that we've put a base coat down in oil, um, for the tiger and for the background. We then put a base coat down for the, for the detail. We then need to go to, uh, we might have to fiddle about a little bit here where we try and get a, a brush that is the right um, texture. Uh, people often, or art, student artists office, often expect to just pick up the right brush and it'll work. And it's, sometimes you have to try several brushes before you get one that gets the result you want, however many times you've, you've done this. Right, rigger, a little bit thicker rigger. Now I'm going to go very lightly um, over the top of this, keeping it very wet. I'm 
just easily you just work over the top of the existing white paint. So it's not you don't always have to wait wait till it dries. One of the things that it does do is dilute your colour a little bit. So perhaps once the picture's dry, you can then rework it perhaps by putting a wash over to reinstate the colour. But if you want to get the detail, you need a fine brush. And a rigger is a brush. It's called a rigger because the um, artists who paint marine paintings use it to do the rigging. You can get a long, fine line. But it also serves its purpose as a, as a suitable tool for um, painting fur. But again, consistency is everything on this. If it's too wet, it will blur. If it's too dry, it won't give you a smooth finish. But you can see we're starting to get some detail on there. In here now. Now, another method that can be very useful is a smaller uh, coma. One of the brushes that I explained earlier spread its arm out. You can get that and you can get a very loose mix on there and you just flick the fur up like that. That will give you a fine detail all in one go. But again, this doesn't happen overnight. You've got to work at this. You've got to keep keep working until you get the right consistency. If it's too wet, as I say, it blurs in. So you can see we're starting to look slightly furry there. Not quite as furry as I'd first hoped, but again, it's getting the colour right and getting the consistency correct. The colours are blurring, blending in a little bit, but we're still giving that illusion of, of fur. As I say, it's a fiddly thing, but you can see we're gradually starting to pick up fur detail here. As I say, once this is dried, if you've, if, when you put in detail on it, it tends to uh, make the colour lighter um, uh, and lose the depth of colour. But you, once your pit oil has dried, you can do a wash of colour over the top just to re... Um, the detail will still show through, but it will lift the colours slightly. But there you have it. There's a few brushes that might be useful to you when you're, you're, you're painting for in oil. Thanks, Pip. Great little exercise there for seeing how brilliant brush techniques and oils can combine to paint realistic fur. Now it's time for our final break, but join us in part four when experimental artist Alison Board brings her nosy cow to life in the concluding part of today's Try Your Hand Up project. And Vic Beercroft is the final word on using pastels to paint the perfect mouth. We'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.